Just recently, I got a question from Edwin KU4ZX asking about frequency offsets, transmit receive frequencies, and their relationship between them with simple homebrew direct conversion CW transceivers. It's a little bit complex, so I thought it was worth making a video. You need to know the relationship between your transmit and receive frequency. If you don't, then you might be on the wrong frequency when you're coming back to a station and they may not hear you. Or conversely, you could be calling CQ and stations might come back to you, but you don't hear them as you're listening on the wrong frequency. I'll explain all these concepts, particularly as they relate to simple homebrew direct conversion equipment. Here's a simulation of a spectrum display. This is 7.1 megahertz. This is one kilohertz above that, and this is one kilohertz below it. At the moment, the band is dead. There's no signals. But let's supposing that a station comes up. They might be tuning up and then eventually put out a CQ call on CW exactly on 7.1 megahertz. Meanwhile, you are casually tuning by. You are tuning from bottom up higher in frequency with your direct conversion receiver. You can see the blue line, which is your local oscillator frequency, gets closer to the desired signal, such that you reach a point which is called zero beat, where it disappears, and then, as you keep tuning up, it gets higher, and then, until you keep tuning higher, and then you go past it. Just to repeat, we're tuning up, getting closer to the carrier until we're at zero beat, and then we keep tuning up and we go away from the carrier with the beat frequency increasing until you've gone past it. You might have noticed that when I tuned across, the pitch of their signal started high, dropped very low down to zero beat, and then went up high again as you tuned across. There are actually two points where you could hear their signal. That is because you're using a direct conversion receiver. Because it doesn't have a crystal filter or is so simple that it doesn't have phasing circuitry, it means that you hear their signal at two spots in the dial. That can make a direct conversion receiver more prone to interference and mean that you might have to dodge the interference with your dial in order to receive the desired signal clearly. For instance, bear in mind that our desired carrier is on 7100, another carrier comes up on 7102, then because we've got our receiver centered on 7101, you'll hear signals from both the desired signal here on 7100 and 7102. That's a problem you only have with a direct conversion receiver that doesn't have any opposite sideband rejection. If you're using a SUPEC receiver which has a crystal filter or a special type of direct conversion receiver which has phasing circuitry to null out the opposite sideband response, then you'll be fine. You'll only hear the desired signal. But let's say you've still got a basic direct conversion receiver like this one here, then the only way you can dodge the interference on 7102 is to move your own frequency down so that the center is below and you've got your 600 to 800 hertz difference here and you're able to hear the signal on 7.1 without interference from the one up on 7102 because of your audio filters bandpass. Of course that's only good if the band is uncrowded. If there's a, another signal that comes up on 7098 then you've got the problem all over again and can't escape it. Anyway that's the limitations of direct conversion receivers but provided that the band is not too busy and the desired signal you're trying to receive here is fairly strong, then you should be okay. So we've set up so that you are receiving the station on 7100. Your local oscillator is close to 7101, producing a comfortable beat note of around 1000 hertz in the headphone. Now, what if you wanted to come back to that station? Often in a direct conversion CW transceiver, the local oscillator is the same on both the transmit and receive, 
But if you're to transmit a signal on this frequency near 7101, then the chances are that the station calling, who is monitoring 7100, isn't going to hear you. What you need to do is you need to move your frequency to the same frequency that the transmitting station was on, i.e. down here. Then on receive, you go back to there. On transmit there, receive there. If you've got a good direct conversion transceiver, then there will be some automatic switching. But if not, if it's very simple, then you'll have to switch it manually. Let's supposing that instead of you trying to call another station, you are sending CQ on 7100 on CW, and you've got a direct conversion receiver. If your receiver is going off the same local oscillator as the transmit, and you haven't put in any frequency offset, if the station was to transmit exactly on the same frequency as you were, then the chances are you wouldn't hear them. If they were very slightly off, then you might just hear something. But otherwise, you need to be offset by around 800 hertz. It doesn't really matter which ray you're offset. You can vary the receive frequency above. So there's the difference of 800 hertz. Or you can vary it below. So there's the difference of 800 hertz. But the important thing is that in your changing of the frequency, you do not change your transmit frequency. Otherwise, they will lose you. The crudest is to not have any offset and remember to reach for the tuning control on the transceiver when you go from transmit to receive. Of course, if you're working another station, then your receiver will not be on zero beat because you'll need to be able to hear their signal at a pitch like this. But as soon as they put it over to you, hopefully they'll give you some warning, then you rush to zero beat their signal, then you can commence your transmission and you'll be on their frequency. It's a bit haphazard and is difficult, especially if you're sending quite fast morse or the station doesn't give you much warning when they put it over to you. That's why it's desirable to have an automatic transmit receive frequency offset and it also reduces the risk of errors or you losing contact, especially if signals are quite poor. The other thing you can do is to have a fixed offset of around 800 hertz depending on the pitch of signals you like. And then as you tune across their signal, which is on 7100, you'll hear their signal, then as you tune up in frequency it will go low towards the carrier. You don't want to be transmitting there, but then when you just pass through zero beat, and then again out the other side, so that your receive local oscillator is 800 hertz above their transmitted frequency, but your transmitted signal or transmitted frequency is exactly on theirs, which is where they'll be receiving, so that's where you want it. What I did with this particular transceiver, which I called the Split 40, was I had two tuning controls, one for the receiver and one for the transmitter. I had a switch, or I think it is a relay, that switches so it uses this one on transmit and this one on receive. So you could independently set the transmit frequency different to the receive. Now, of course, this isn't a very good frequency readout, so what I put in was a spot button. When I press the spot button, it would allow the receiver to function, but controlled by the variable capacitor that controlled the transmit frequency. And I moved this to zero beat on the desired signal, in other words, to bring the transmitter to that frequency here. And then, because there was automatic switching in here, when I went to receive, then I was able to tune the receiver in on this VFO knob. It's actually the same frequency oscillator I'm using. It's shared between the transmitter and receiver, but I'm using some switching, so I'm using a different control on transmit to the one being used on receive. In this video, we've covered transmit and receive frequencies and the relationship between them, especially if you're using simple 
Homebrew Direct Conversion CW Equipment. It's important to know this, otherwise you'll miss out on many contacts that would otherwise have been possible. I do sometimes get questions addressed to me either through private messages on YouTube or the Facebook VK3YE Radio Books page. For some reason though, it can take a while until I actually know that a new message has been sent. So if you do have a question, I'd rather that you leave it in the comments section of the most relevant video and I'll more easily find it. The other benefit of posing a question in a public comment section is that other viewers may be able to come up with an answer that's quicker and better than I could.